I want to develop, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago before he came to the country, I interviewed Richard Dawkins. It was fascinating. And he was quite clearly here, it would seem to me. He was here to... Um, uh, what could I say? He was here to basically stand up for the Listener 7, a bunch of uh, academics in New Zealand who wrote an open letter saying, incorporating Mataranga Māori, which is kind of a broad sweeping term for sorts of Māori belief systems and some Māori shared knowledge about the environment and the world, putting Mataranga Māori into the science syllabus and into university science courses was crazy because it's not science. Um, Richard Dawkins wasn't saying Mataranga Māori in itself was just mumbo-jumbo and rubbish, but he said, in a science um, curriculum, it has no place. Well, that has provoked all sorts of backlash from the same people who are probably into drag queens. And I want to read for you one particular person, Dr. Tara McAllister, who studies something really pointy head about water flows or hydration. Dr. Tara McAllister works at the Auckland University and Victoria University. And she clearly doesn't like Richard Dawkins standing up for rationality, Professor Richard Dawkins in New Zealand. Um, and here's what she said. Of course, the listener seven, these were these dissident, sensible academics, had lunch with Richard Dawkins while he was in New Zealand. They're a bunch of sad, racist, dusty dinosaurs. That's a very academic thing to say. And she then goes on to tweet, not that effing twat Dick Dawkins again. I will not read his effing white supremacist reckons on Mataranga. So that's Dr. Tara McAllister. And she is, of course, and there's more from Dr. Tara McAllister, though she tries to hide much of her racist uh, vitriol uh, online. She is, of course, paid by universities and she is shaping young minds. Um, and people are coming out and they're standing up for Richard Dawkins and what he said. And one of those people from Hobson's Pledge and former leader of the opposition and former leader, I think, of the ACT Party is Dr Don Brash, who joins us now. Don, uh, welcome to the platform. How are you? Good morning, Sean. I'm very well indeed. Thank you. Have you been surprised at the vitriol um, that has been directed at Richard Dawkins in the wake of his speaking tour of New Zealand? And the piece he wrote in The Spectator, which I thought was superb, just saying keep quasi-religious spirituality out of scientific research and education. Have I been surprised? No. Have I been depressed? Certainly. Not surprised because uh, we all recall the huge parori which was prompted by the letter to the listener by seven Auckland University professors who was simply making the same kind of point that uh, Maori beliefs are important to Maori, uh, just as, as Christian myths are important to Christians, but they are not science. And uh, uh, astonishingly, a couple of thousand New Zealand academics wrote in support of the protest against those seven professors. I mean, it is depressing in the extreme that we've got so many uh, ignorant, simplistic, uh, backward people in our academia. Yeah, it does seem though. Like, I mean, that's not a coincidence, is it, Don? This is reflective of a culture that has been built up over time. Sadly, again, that seems to be the case. I mean, um, it was more than 10 years ago, I wrote a column about uh, uh, Maori beliefs and I recorded one uh, part Maori academic saying that her ancestor was the was the river of Waikato River. Sorry, it was the Waikato River, and I commented at the time that if she really believed that, our education system is much more backward than I had imagined. All right, can this boat be turned around? Can we stop people like Dr. Tara McAllister just being blatantly racist and, to be frank, stupid? Well, I, I hope so, uh, and in a sense, it's a it's a part of the whole. Uh, educational problem we've got in the country. I mean, just not long ago, we are talking about the, the history curriculum, which is now being foisted on our schools. Mm. The history curriculum is, is biased, it's incomplete, and it, it's bigoted, quite frankly. Uh, very depressing. All right. Um, Our kids are being brought up with with totally false view of reality. Yeah. It would be nice to see, wouldn't it be, a Minister of Education or someone come out and put a stake in the ground on this, some leadership from government on these issues. Yes, and I mean, sadly, I mean, the person who was Minister of Education for most of the last five years is now the Prime Minister. 
Uh, so, you know, one can't be very optimistic about the, that happening. Mm. I mean, uh, you're not saying, though, that Matauranga Māori doesn't have a place somewhere in the education system or somewhere in the life of New Zealand? Well, I mean, in the same way exactly that I hope most New Zealanders have some understanding of, of what the Christian background is. Uh, I mean, uh, most Christians or many Christians are brought up with the idea that the universe was created in six days. Not many New Zealanders of any denomination or any background uh, believe that, 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 that in a literal sense. But, I mean, that we should know about those myths is is an important part of our culture. Yes. I don't deny at all that some of the Maori myths are also part of our culture. Some of them have, have real validity. Others, are in the same way, the creation myths of Christianity are, uh, are simply things which were developed in a context where people did not have any understanding of how the universe did evolve. Yeah. It's almost like we need to send a whole lot of our academics on a kind of rationality course. <laughs> yeah. And I don't like the chance of that actually happening, sure, not, unfortunately. I mean, it's a huge tragedy for us. I mean, as Dawkins pointed out when he was in New Zealand, we're the country that produced Ernest Rutherford, one of the greatest scientists who ever lived. I mean, Dawkins himself ranked him right up there with Einstein. Mm. Um, I read an article the other day uh, quoting Charles Murray in the, U the U.S. saying that of the five greatest contributors to physics understanding, Rutherford ranks number three after uh, Newton and, and uh, Einstein. So he's right up there. And as Dawkins said, the chances of New Zealand again producing a, 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 an Ernest Rutherford uh, don't look very good at the moment. Yeah. Don, there's another issue uh, I just want to raise with you because I suspect you've been, you may have been following it, and if you, you haven't, I'm sorry. Well, two other issues, actually. We've just talked to Yvonne Van Dongen, uh, writer, and there's been a controversy over... Oh, no, actually, let, let's park that one for the moment. Let's the the Tusiata Avia poem that is going to be performed tomorrow night at the Auckland Arts Festival, largely funded, and, and Tusiata's entire life's largely been funded by the government because she's an artiste. A poem which encourages those who hear it, uh, particularly young women of colour, to get into cars uh, with sharpened knives and go around killing white people. Uh, are you aware of it? I am indeed. I heard it on your programme, Sean. You read it. Yeah. Brilliantly. Um, and I'm utterly appalled that that could be not only uh, funded by, by taxpayers, but, but uh, apparently lauded by the Art Society. Yeah. Um, the problem we've got now is there are over, I think, 100 complaints now, we could safely say, to the Human Rights Commission. It's, and they are saying, oh, we're reviewing it. And it seems to me that, that Ming Foon will come out and I think, imagine he's called you racist a few times at the drop of a hat, but they seem to be stuck not commenting on, on e, a, a poem which I think even under current hate, current hate speech laws would probably be actionable. I think that's right. I mean, I, I don't think anybody is going to or should be defending someone who actually advocates going around in cars killing whites i mean it's extraordinary that there hasn't been an outcry about it well there the has but media. just uh not well on, on your platform there has been yeah, yeah and other good. places yeah yeah um all right don um what do we do then about academics like tara McAllister, who call richard dawkins one of the leads, uh, world's leading rationalist humanists when she calls him racist what do we do well, about I, it? it? It's deeply depressing. I mean, uh, to be quite precise, looking at her, she has more uh, European blood yeah. in her. her ancestry I just want to read this to else. Don before we continue. Here's another tweet from here. Yeah. Dick Dawkins shows so clearly that white supremacy is, is so d deeply ingrained in Western science colonising scientists like him, like the Listener 7 and all their little friends who have come out of the shadows will hold on to this thinking until they die. Um, there's more bad stuff. Oh, she's written a poem too, Don. And it goes like this. Oh dear. I am your worst nightmare. My existence challenges your racist assumptions. My presence disturbs your whiteness. I stand in the mana of my tipuna and fight for the mana of my mokapuna. I have not come for a seat at your table. I have come to destroy it. I will deconstruct your table part by part, piece by piece. I will take screws out while you're not looking until your 
table crumbles into nothingness. And that is a, a Tara McAllister, I think, um, Twitter post. Oh, she's got, she's got no place in any uh, university of any kind. I mean, it's this outrageous stuff. She, she's, she wants to go back to a, a day where we thought the world was created in six days. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's hopeless. It, disgusting stuff. Yeah. Hey, Don, uh, I have to leave there. I've got other stuff to get on. I thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Would you have any message for the women in your life on International Women's Day? Uh, <laughs> well, I've got quite a few women in my life between partners and sisters and, and uh, daughters and so on, and I hugely respect all of them. I welcome the fact that New Zealand was the first country in the world to grant women the vote. We're not by any means uh, perfect yet by a long way, but we're a hell of a long way from... Uh, from what we used to be, and that's uh, to be welcomed. Thank you very much indeed for your time, Don. Have a good uh, Women's Day. That is Don Brash uh, from Hobson's Pledge, uh, former uh, leader of the National Party. I think it was ACT Party leader too. And someone prepared to speak his mind. Jolly, jolly good.